I'm lucky I journal a lot at the advice of Andy Cohen about 15 years ago. And he said to me, you should journal because you're gonna wanna write a book one day. And I said, never. I will never write a book. Not everybody needs to write a book. And then, uh, you know, so here, here I am. I can officially say everyone now has written a book. Looking for a new love, call me Jody. If you need a backup singer, yeah, yeah, yeah. For more than two decades, Kelly Ripa has been a staple of daytime television. Look at these curves, everybody. <laughs> it is August, you know. It's come August. On, it's summer. August is when the girls come out to play. Guys. Now, the Emmy Award winning host, producer, wife, and mother of three is adding author to her resume with her new book, Livewire Long Winded Short Stories. But Kelly shares that writing a memoir proved to be not such an easy stroll down memory lane. When you delve back into your past, um, a lot of it is trying to find the middle ground so that it's not such a seesaw ride because I don't want people to get um, uh, nauseated reading up the book. And it really is meant to be sort of a journey, but more of a fun journey than a troubling journey and more relatable than not relatable. And so I broach it the way we sort of broach our talk show. You know, it, it's, it's, we're gonna give you the news. Some of it may upset you, but for the most part, it's gonna be a fun ride. The entire book took me a year to write. Six months of it went to talking about my early career and like that, that big portion of work because I wanted to strike the right balance. I don't want it to feel like I'm slamming anyone. I don't want it to feel like I'm being disrespectful or not being reverent, but also I want people to understand that it was not a duck walk. I wasn't given it, I wasn't given a job freely and with like a big welcome wagon. It was not that way at all. In the book, Kelly goes in depth for the first time about the ups and downs of her relationship with her first co-host, Regis Philbin, when she joined the morning talk show in 2001. I had to really earn my place there and it took me years to earn my place there and to earn things that are routinely given, and I say this with respect, but routinely given to the men that I worked with, I had to earn those things over years and years and years and years, including an office, including a place to, you know, um, you know, put a computer. Those are very basic things, but they were not basic for me. Those were things I had to really um, fight for. And I think that time, again, I always go back to time and keeping in thought with the times, things were different back then. Um, I just noticed that things, you know, things just uh, happened much faster for men that work in that building versus women. And maybe that was just the way it was back then. I mean, I'm gonna say the early years, there were days where I, I'm sure I was not in my body at all. I'm certain I was not there. Like I may have physically been there, but I'm certain I was floating somewhere else because, you know, it's not always easy. I mean, in anybody's job, I'm not just like saying, oh, it's not easy for me. In anybody's job, you're gonna have good days and bad days. That is all people. I am not immune to that because I'm on camera. There were times where I would think, okay, I've got 10 seconds how do I flip the switch? And then you have to realize that there are people uh, at home that, that watch the show that maybe uh, are going through way worse stuff and they're having a way worse day at work and maybe they just need to, uh, they need a little lightness, a little pick me up. And so it's with that spirit that I've always done my job to the best of my abilities. Some days I succeeded, some days I failed, but usually the failures are, you know, funnier anyway. So, you know, maybe somebody got a laugh out of it. But I think it's important to keep in mind that it's, it's a job just like any job. There's a great deal of anxiety that goes into it. I don't think you're human 
if you're on camera and not feeling a certain level of, um, am I being enough enough? Botox treatments are great. Yeah. I have to say. Yes. I really love them. Yeah. I'm an impatient person yes. and I find the results are immediate. Yeah. As I describe in the book, being open and honest about cosmetic procedures, I've always done on the show. Like I've always talked about it open and honestly because I thought really honestly at 40 years old that I was the only person aging and I couldn't figure out why. And I kept saying, I need to quit my job because the hours are its too early in the morning, it's too much reading, it's too much work, it's a lot of anxiety and it's too much makeup and it's weighing on me and I'm just looking you know, older than everybody else. Meanwhile, <laughs> there are procedures that people have done. And then once you start talking about what you're having done, people become very open about what they're having done. And then you start trading doctors. <laughs> and you know, at the end of the book, I put in all my doctors so that people can reach out to them if they want. Because I think it's important to like keep, if, if you're at least in the New York area, if there's somebody you see that you think is good, you should, you know, be generous with that information. For the new memoir, Kelly says she got some help from her husband of 26 years, actor Mark Consuelos. And she didn't hold anything back when it came to writing about their relationship. I have to say that Mark is, I cannot say enough good about this man who has not just taken a life journey with me, but really, when it came to this book, he was the first pair of ears. He was my most honest critic. He was, I, I call him my pre-editor. Before I met my editor, he was the pre-editor who said, you shouldn't put that in there. Or that may upset people. Or, you know, he was just a very, very honest critic. And I really wrote at, with great liberty about him. And he has such a strong sense of self and such a great sense of humor that I could write anything about him without him saying, babe, please don't put that in. You know, he was very uh, open to me talking about our marriage and things we've gone through. And, and I think the way couples stay married or stay together, the way a couple stays together is to have an open and honest dialogue, to be forgiving of one another, to keep a sense of humor, and we have never uh, not we've never not been each other's champions. We don't compete with each other; we compete for each other. So it's like we are constantly striving to raise each other up. We were married at our son's Michael's age, and I can't imagine him being married. Like I would show up at the church and be like, "Stop the wedding, no." Uh, because he, you know, it's like too young to get married. But for us, it worked. I don't know why. I say it in the book. It's like on paper, it should not work. It doesn't make any sense. But we really, I, some things were, we were just fortunate. It was meant to be, and and everything worked. And when it didn't work, we really worked at it. Like we fought for each other. We fought for our marriage when we were like, when it would have been easier to quit and throw in the towel and be like, you know, I think people want to feel like they do on the first date for the rest of their marriage. And that is not reality. That just doesn't happen. You have to make those moments happen. Kelly is known for sharing details about her home life with Mark on Instagram and in interviews. But now in her book, she's getting candid about their sex life. It's the one part of our life that has always been good. Even when we're arguing, it's good. Even when we have a disagreement, it's good. It's the one thing that has always been good. And I think, and I said this before, I think it's because we found each other when we were both really young. And so we really got to know each other. And when you spend such a long time together, there is no inhibition whatsoever. We have no inhibition with each other, ever. And so it's very liberating, it's very freeing. Um, yeah, I think that's really the secret to it. We have things that we do together that we love. We love to hike. We just took up tennis. Um, can pickleball be far behind? I don't know. 
but um, we do things together as a couple, we like that, but we have separate interests also, and we keep those separate. We've, we, have friend, we have friend groups that are the same, and then we have friend groups that are separate. And we sometimes work together, but we also work separately. But that's like a skill set that develops over time. I think a lot, a lot of times people like split up or give up before that kicks in. You know, and we just were very fortunate that we, you know, listen, my parents have been married for 61 years. Mark's parents have been married for 55 years or so. That's like all we know is long-term uh, unions. We don't know any other way. It's the only example we have. So we've, been, we've benefited from that greatly. The day we got back from dropping Joaquin off at college, I started writing the empty nest chapter in real time. I wrote it from the end back. Um, and it, it was, um, it was one of those things where I, I was crying when I was writing it. When I finished writing it, I handed it to Mark and he cried. It's not just a tear festival, but it's provocative. It makes you think. There were moments there that I was like, we're gonna be that couple. Our third child goes to college and we get divorced because this is it. We have nothing. Um, but there was this moment where we went to the beach for the first time since our honeymoon and we sat on the beach with cheese and a baguette and we watched the sunset and we were watching all these other parents like running around us with small kids and they were like they had sand on everything and they looked exhausted and this man with like a he had a, his cell phone light on and he may have had like a headlamp light on and he was looking for his daughter's flip-flops, which I knew he was never gonna find, you know? And I know how fast that time is gonna go for them. And there's gonna be a moment of great sadness, but it was the first time we sat there and we looked at the sky and we were saying to one another, is it always pretty like this here at the beach? I, I didn't notice that the beach was pretty. I didn't notice that the sunset and the sky changed color like that because I was making sure my kids didn't get burned by it, somebody's bonfire or run into the water when I wasn't looking or couldn't find their, you know. It, I spent so much time in it that I didn't look around. And so I think that for us was like this oh wait, this is like this next phase of our lives and this is kind of great.